sometimes tell people that, you know, when you hang out as the ethicist with engineers or scientists, when they think when the ethicist comes into the room, the ethicist's role is to say, slow down, like maybe stop doing that. Are you really sure that's a good idea? And everything, it's like this, the philosopher comes in to put the brakes on the whole enterprise. And that's one of the kind of stereotypes I feel like I often want to try to set aside from people. much for your time, Bob, to participate in this conversation on one of my favorite topics. Thanks a lot for the conversation. One of the things which I'm excited about with my position at Stanford HAI is that it's giving me an opportunity as a scholar to talk to audiences outside the walls of the university. And in the process, I've been learning a great deal. It seems like a very remote field between artificial intelligence, computer science, and political science. Like kind of, what's your perspective on participating in the mission of HAI as a political scientist? What do you think is so critical to participate and what kind of the roles that you play in shaping the, the better future? Yeah, I'm going to give you a completely honest answer here, because the honest answer is that there are two pieces. The first piece is that I have been a professor, just as you said, in the political science department for about 20 years at Stanford. And over the course of the past decade, I watched the mass migration of the undergraduate student body who would major in the School of Engineering. The number of majors in the computer science field, and AI in particular, has just gone through the roof. I just wanted to go figure out what's happening across campus over there. So I started trying to hang out myself over there. That's where I began to meet some people like, you know, Fei Fei Li and the other leaders of, of HAI. The bigger picture story is that for the reasons I just explained concerning the massive effects and the great power and potential of AI in the world, I happen to share the view that I believe is core to the mission of HAI. The role of philosophers or ethicists or social scientists in thinking about the future of AI is not only after the AI scientists have invented something in the lab or deployed it within a company, and then the philosophers or the social scientists come in to think about its effects in the world. I wanted to be in the lab with them, asking questions from the very initial part of the design or the, the idea to think about the ethical issues and the interactions with democratic ideas and likewise for my social science colleagues. I sometimes tell people that, you know, when you hang out as the ethicist with engineers or scientists, when they think when the ethicist comes into the room, the ethicist's role is to say, slow down, like maybe stop doing that. Are you really sure that's a good idea? And everything, it's like this, the philosopher comes in to put the brakes on the whole enterprise. And sometimes that's true. But more generally, I think that the important role that philosophers play is not to tell people to stop doing what they're doing, because that implies like I'm the ethics expert and you just do what you do and then let the ethics expert decide whether it's a good idea. My idea is that ethics is unavoidable for all of us. All of us have a moral compass. All of us confront ethical questions in our personal lives and our professional lives. I don't want to conceive of myself as the expert that you then consult with to decide whether or not it's the right or wrong thing to do, but rather someone who can help provide frameworks for confronting the value tensions and the trade-offs that are inevitable in our personal lives, in our professional lives, and at the forefront of technological discovery in particular. Let me just give you a concrete example. So take something we're all familiar with now, which is surveillance technologies that are on our smartphones and the cookies that collect our uh, 
on various bits of data from our web surfing, etc. So some people say this is a big abuse of privacy and the internet has basically diminished individual privacy. That seems quite a plausible view. It's also the case that some people now say, well, let's move to end-to-end -end encrypted messaging platform. We should go start using Signal WhatsApp on an end-to-end -end encrypted platform where neither the government nor the company can inspect the content of your messaging. That would be much more privacy protecting. But of course, then what the government says is, well, what if terrorists are coordinating on end-to-end -end encrypted platforms some type of a potential attack? Or what if sex traffickers are using end-to-end -end encrypted messaging in order to coordinate crimes? There's a trade-off between privacy and safety or privacy and security. And part of what's philosophically interesting for all of us, not just for the philosopher, is if you are developing these tools in a company or if you're a public policy regulator, you have to confront this trade-off between protecting privacy, but then eliminating the possibility of protecting individual safety or national security. How should we make that balance? The idea that the right approach is just to go with whatever's in your stomach is no sufficient way of moving forward. And that's where the philosopher can come in. When you're learning the basics of algorithmic models, now you'll have to confront questions of algorithmic bias and fairness. It won't be, if you're interested in that, go take the class in the philosophy department. It will be built into the core classes in CS.